for joining us today, everyone. My name is Kate Bierman, and I'm here with Julia Hepanowitz and Jenna Miles. We are the Customer Engagement Team, which is a new team here at TDS Health. The goal of this new team is to educate librarians, admin, faculty, and all types of users of subscribed content on how to most efficiently and effectively use the resources that are already available to them. In addition to hosting national events like this one today, we're also available to customers for one-on-one -on -one or group training sessions. And we can also help with onboarding new products, promotions to end users using videos and other types of marketing tactics. And in many cases, help students access the products that they have and register for them. And if that's needed. That said, we will be discussing today how faculty can best utilize Primal Pictures and how they can get the most out of their subscriptions. So we will keep it pretty general as we know that subscriptions vary from account to account. We will speak to the core Primal Pictures products, but keep this to overall features and particularly to those that are applicable to educators. So please post questions in the Q&A and we will answer them throughout the session or follow up with you afterwards. So let's get this started and I will pass this off to Julia who will take you through a few features. Awesome, thank you Kate and good morning or good afternoon everyone. We really appreciate you joining us for this first Learning Lab session. Um, so as we mentioned, we're going to be going into Primal Pictures today. So. As you can see, this is our first screen when we log into Primal Pictures, or you'll see it also referred to as Anatomy TV. Um, before we jump into any one of the specific modules, I wanted to just go over some of these different faculty features that you might not be aware of within the platform as a whole. One feature that is very popular and I highly recommend utilizing is our cross-module search bar at the top here. You can see that if I type in a keyword such as heart, it will search all of the content within Primal Pictures that your institution subscribes to, and you'll have access to everything related to your search term um, present right here in these search results. So you can see it gives us different slides, movies, as well as all of the different structure and 3D views that you have access to in your subscription. This is great. So instead of going into each one of the different modules, trying to find some content that is relevant, you can simply do this cross-functional search and it will bring up that relevant information along with features to filter out by different product type, regions, system, etc. on the left-hand side here. Going back to our title screen here, you can see that this is our basic overview of the Anatomy TV resource. There's quite a lot of content that's in here, especially if your institution subscribes to multiple different modules. So one way to kind of narrow down this content is to use our favorites button that's up on the top toolbar right here. If we click on my favorites, you can see that it prompts us to log into a personal profile. If you've already created a personal profile, you can go ahead and sign in right here, or you can go through the process of creating your personal profile, which brings up this content on the right-hand side where you simply enter a bit of information about yourself and you'll have your account set up. The great feature about the personal profile is that it allows you to uh, not only save this content to um, you know, your machine <clears throat> that you're working on, but you can also have the content follow you around from device to device. So you could have uh, a personal profile logged in on your cell phone, on your computer, and on a tablet and have all of that content follow you along. You can also save these different titles so that when you're on your home screen, you're only seeing those different modules that are most relevant to what you're teaching or what you're learning about at the moment. Of course, you still have access to all of the content, but that can just make it a little bit simpler and not as overwhelming when you first log in to your Primal Pictures account. Next, I wanted to go into our 3D Atlas module. You can see that our 3D Atlas module is set up in a pretty standard way across all of the different Primal Pictures content that we have. We have our navigation panel on the left-hand side, our viewing panel in the center, and our text panel on the right-hand side. 
Every time that you open up this module, you're prompted to have a few different guides on the right hand side here, just about um, how you can utilize the resource. Um, our user guide is very helpful if you ever just want a quick refresh on what you can do within the content. But on the left hand side in our navigation tab is where we'll find most of these different features for how we can really navigate within the product. We have a different index that is organized by anatomical structures. So you can see we can open this up and it goes very narrow into all of these different features to bring us up um, that content in the center and the corresponding text. We also have an A to Z index that is again filtered by different types of views and different results here. And similar to what we had on the home screen page, we have a search bar on the top right here where you can type in any term that you might be looking for, and it will look for the content specifically in our 3D Atlas head and neck module. Going down to our next admin feature on the left-hand side, we have our favorites. Again, we're prompted to sign into our personal profile if we have that information available, just so these favorites can follow us from device to device, or if we wanted to continue without a personal profile and only save the content to this device, we can do that within each of these modules. You can see here, it would allow us to add this favorite of the view right in front of us. And we can also create different folders or we can save it to our files here. The next option on the left-hand side is our copy link. Clicking this simply copies the link right to your clipboard. And if you pasted that into your browser, it would bring you directly to this view. So if I changed this view slightly, you know, I had a different rotation and I had a structure highlighted within it, you can see that that link does change to correspond with that changed view. So it's very unique and very custom if you're really trying to have students or other faculty members get to that specific view that you're looking at. That can be much easier than just directing them into Primal Pictures as a whole and doing a search. This is great for, like I said, those very unique custom views that you have and you want someone to be directly linked into. Going down to this download icon right here, you can see we also have a save option. So you could save the image or save the text that you have pulled up with the image. This downloads the content directly to your local device. So it would be on whatever um, you know, laptop, computer, or um, tablet that you're using. And the content is also completely web-based. So if you were on a iPhone or an Android, you can access all of this content as well through the web app, the same interface that you see on your screen right now. All of the content that you would be downloading um, is included with your subscription and covered under the copyright. So you can use this for any educational purposes that you have within your institution. The final feature that I wanted to highlight is this cloud icon right here. This is our embeddable viewer feature, which is very popular and great for different admins as you're creating your courses and building out your LMS pages. You can see here that we have a few different dropdowns for all different LMS systems that we collaborate with, Canvas, Moodle, Blackboard, et cetera. If you have an LMS that's not listed here, you can reach out to our team and we're happy to work with you to see if we can make this work. Let's say you have Canvas at your institution. You would simply select Canvas from that dropdown. You would select if you wanted to embed the text or embed just the product link, the size of the image that you have here. Click Generate Code, Copy Code. Again, it would copy it right to your clipboard, and you can paste that directly into your LMS. And the great thing about that is this entire feature would be interactive directly within your Canvas learning page. So students can interact with that module, click around, see different text and different highlighting options, and it would all be directly within your LMS. If you're on Primal Pictures and you see that you don't have an option to create this, please reach out to our team and we're happy to assist you in connecting your LMS with the 3D Atlas or any of our other modules so that you can be sure that you're able to embed this content. Those are the biggest admin features within our 3D Atlas and how most of our products are set up with the different modules. Um, again, everything within this module is web-based, which is great. So you can use this across all different devices. When you're utilizing those personal profile features, as well as the embedding, it makes a very seamless 
option for all of your courses so that students can access the content in any way that's most convenient for them. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment, allow for any questions if we have any, and then we will head over to Jenna's section. Um, I don't see any questions in the Q&A, so thank you, Julia. Jenna, why don't you take us through your features? Certainly, get that set up. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and take us back to the Primal Pictures homepage. I'm going to be covering a couple of the other features in here. One common question that we get from faculty is, do we have any quizzing or interactive learning modules in here? And the answer is yes, there's quite a bit in here. Um, specifically, for example's sake, I'm going to take a look at the anatomy and physiology module that we have. Um, I specifically opened the nervous system. So when we open that up, oops, excuse me. What we're going to see is it's a similar layout to the atlas that Julia discussed. So you'll have a navigation panel here on the left, the center will be your viewing panel, and on the right hand side we have that text material. Where the anatomy and physiology module differs is that it's set up more like an interactive textbook. So this right hand side, all that material that you're reading, that's going to read more like a textbook where you'll have learning objectives, and read it more like a chapter versus specifically about the structures that we're looking at here in the center. Specific to those interactive learning components where we see this little beaker, this is what's considered their interactive learning panel. So what is included underneath the interactive learning is anything from point and click, draw tools, small quizzing, um, you'll see all of that populate here. So if you're looking for something to give for your students to do for self-study or for them to follow along within their chapters as you move through certain areas, this is a great feature to utilize. It's something to give them for some self-study and some interactive piece. I apologize, I have a cold. So if you see me mute for a second, that's what's happening. So in, in addition to the interactive learning, if you really just want to look at some self-study quizzing, that's where you'll see this little question mark. And these are all the quizzes that align with the chapter that we're looking at specifically. So you can navigate through these and have your students complete them if you want them to be doing some self-study while they're working through. Um, similar to the Atlas, this material is also embeddable and linkable into your LMS system. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to take any of the verbiage in here, any of the images, again, you can link that into your LMS. Um, I've seen this utilized in more of a flipped classroom approach. So if a faculty member is covering a certain topic and they want to have their students be a little more prepared beforehand or do some self-study and review, they'll assign them some of these quizzes to go in and maybe brush up their information on it if they haven't looked at it in quite a bit. So I do encourage you look at some of these questions and quizzes in here to see if they're useful for you within your coursework as well. Jenna, before we um, move on, are quizzes just for faculty or similar to any quizzes the students already have access to while studying? So the quizzes that are in specifically the anatomy and physiology module are based off of the content that's in here. So they're all self-study. They'll probably read similar to that that you would see in an anatomy and physiology textbook. So I would say that they're probably similar in nature to those, but these are accessible both for faculty and students. And so when I say they're self-study, they're not gradable. They're not something they submit at this point, but it's something that you can assign for them to go in and do on their own. When they do answer a question and submit it, they will be given the correct answer. So they'll be able to go and review the material prior to class or after class, depending on the need. Uh, does that help? Yeah, great. Um, and I have a question from uh, Embeddable Viewer, uh, pertaining to Embeddable Viewer for uh, before. Uh, is the embed for PowerPoint insertion as well, not just Canvas, or would you save image and then insert? 
Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. So what I would suggest is downloading the image to your device, and then you can enter that into your PowerPoint. That would probably be, probably be the most easiest way just to make sure that the content is the best resolution and shows up in your PowerPoints. Um, the embeddable viewer is really just for those LMS systems so that students can use the content within your course page. Okay, and to jump back to quizzes again, um, we're not giving unique questions to faculty. The, the faculty and students see the same questions, correct? Yes, these are the same collection of uh, questions across both um, faculty and student access. They see the same ones, so they're just assigned by the certain section that you're in. Those are the questions that correlate. Okay. Any any other questions on A&P while I have it open? No. Okay, one other feature I'll point out really quickly is if you are looking for something more clinical focused that you're wanting to have your students take a look at, uh, where this little heart is, you'll see that we have both clinical and aging correlates. So these are different clinical case studies. Oh, should have given a little warning with some gore there. Um, but this is these are little case studies that you can utilize where it'll give an overview, some causes, symptoms, and diagnosis. So if you're wanting to tie in a clinical component, this is included in here as well if you want to use this for reference. Um, that is the main breakdown of the anatomy and physiology material that has some use cases for faculty. Again, similar to what Julia said, the other functions are the same where you have the embedding function, saving, and the copy linking. Um, the last group I'm going to go through is the 3D real-time product, and that one is going to differ from some of the others that we covered today. Um, so I'll go ahead and switch over to that if my computer would work with me. Okay, so we have popped into the 3D real-time product, and now I will tell you I preloaded this for this presentation, but when you do log into the 3D real-time product, there will be a point and click guide that populates when you're popping it up. So if you want to go through that to refresh your memory on how to use material in here, that's available to you as well. Um, the best way that I would describe the 3D real-time product is think like a true virtual dissection. So this is a fully customizable module in and of itself. So what we've seen within the Atlas, Anatomy and Physiology, and some of the other modules We've got some great preset sections for you to move down, move up through as you select views that you want to use for your coursework or to show your students. How this differs is you're able to fully customize views in here. There are no restrictions. So we can utilize pre-selected scenes that are over here on the left or on the right-hand side where we have all of the different structures we can add all of our arteries in we can take them all away we can add all of our ligaments in. we can take them all away um we can take a look at the bone regions take them away so you are able to fully customize the viewing in here again we have some pre-selected ones so if you wanted to start with one of these and use that as your base you can then ghost out structures hide structures move through based on what you want to create. So it's just a very open-ended product for you to utilize. Um, where I've seen this resource used quite frequently is in a virtual lab setting. So especially during the pandemic, I had quite a few programs who would utilize this for virtual dissection labs because it was easy for them to access it. They were able to create these custom views. So um, giving a real case example, that's how I've seen this utilized. Um, in addition to creating the custom views, creating something that you want to utilize, you also have the opportunity in here to mock this up. So down here on the left, we'll see we have these little pencil icons. With that, we can draw all over this. So if I want to add circles, if I want to add pins and labels, I'm able to do that in here and mock up this image to be exactly what I want to utilize. This is available for both students and faculty. So another use case I've seen is where faculty will assign students a certain structure, a certain condition with correlating structures and have them create custom material and then submit that for review to their faculty. So um, 
One thing to note, though, is that this product does not have the embeddable features. So this is not able to be embedded into the LMS. And the reason that is, is because you'd have to embed the entire product because of that sandbox nature of being able to do anything you want with it. But you do still have that saving function as well as that copy linking. So where you see this camera, that'll take a screenshot of the image itself with high resolution for you to save, pop into a PowerPoint, pop onto your LMS system if you want something that's a standing image. Your students can do that, send that to you in an email. So you still have the ability to save content as a still image, as well as that linking tool. So we have that linking feature down here where these three dots are, where we're able to name it, create a link, it'll go to our clipboard, and then we can submit that out to students via email, pop it on our LMS system. Um, I see faculty use that a lot where students have maybe created an image, they flipped it away that they don't understand, they're having a hard time. They copy the link, they send it to their faculty, and they say, this is what I'm looking at. Can you help me get back to baseline? So um, that's where the differing tools are within here. So I would encourage if you have access to 3D real time and you're someone who's really trying to teach more of a virtual dissection space, you want to be able to create that custom content, take a look in here. It's going to have a lot of material that relates. Um, I'll give a quick warning really quick because I didn't on the last one, I'm going to pull up a dissection slide. So in addition to having the ability to create custom content, we also can match it and mirror it to a dissection. So if you see here on the left, I have a dissection slide pulled up, the model here on the right. So what you can do is if you highlight structures and move through this dissection slide, you'll see that it highlights over here on your model. So you're able to do that comparative analysis to a true dissection of a cadaver to a model that you can then manipulate. You can examine those things in space. You can inspect those structures. So it really is something that is endless in the opportunities for you to create material in here. And yeah, I think that is the, the gist of 3D real time. Are there any questions about that while I'm on it? Yeah, can you go through the ghost out feature a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So exactly where you click to get that. Absolutely. So I'll pull up a regular looking model to make it a little bit easier to see. So if I have my structure here in the center, down on the bottom, you'll see all of these tools. These are those custom tools for the actual structures themselves. So if I highlight the structure here, the ghost is going to completely hide it and show behind it. And when you want to return it to normal, you hit solid. If you want to completely get rid of that structure, that's where you would use your hide button or your hide button. So you'd be able to go through, continue to hide those structures. Oh, let's put my brain in there. What am I doing? Um, and then be able to dissect down. So ghost, you can look behind. Hide completely gets rid of the structure. And then the additional ones down here, the examine tool gives you more of like an x-ray view. And then inspect gives you more of a view of just the structure in and of itself. And then the context view pulls you in context of the entire image. So those are the varying views that you can utilize down there on the bottom. Any other questions about that? Yeah, there's another that might be um, too specific that we might have to revisit um, after the webinar, but could you please show the quiz section once more with an example of the identification of any of the cranial nerves? Ooh, I will take that one offline just to verify that I can pull the right material. So okay. I'll, put, I'll put up a note of it. That way I can direct you to the right material so I'm not spending time looking because I don't want to keep you on here too long. Okay, sounds great. Okay, um, any more questions from anybody? If we haven't ha answered um, anything, then uh, there's a couple that I responded that I'll follow up with you afterwards um, that were a little bit specific to your accounts, but um, looks like there's nothing else. So uh, thank you, Jenna. Um, Let's pop up. The, okay, thank you for showing this. This is a document that we'll send um, in our follow-up email along with this recording. Um, it also, this document contains what is 
already been created for Primal Pictures in terms of user quick guides, tutorial videos, and other things. And you can also find this information on the platform itself under help in the left drop down. They have a great help resource with a lot of materials, a lot of videos, et cetera, to help with all of this. Um, but let us know if there's any additional support you need. We're happy to commit create custom materials for you, um, you know, speaking directly to the content that you buy. So we're happy to do that. Um, but before we go, uh, we have a quick force question survey that will pop up after you leave. So please fill it out um, to help us for future events. We'll be holding these regularly, these learning lab sessions. Um, the last question in the survey pertains to what topics you'd like to see for future sessions, and it can be about any TDS health product, not just Primal Pictures. So we are happy to host these regularly and uh, want to identify what your needs are. So thanks for filling out that survey, and thank you for your time today. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.